Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about brushless motor temperatures and we're going to be breaking this down into a few different areas. We're going to be talking about the application of temperature and how you may be affected. But first we're going to get into the maximum motor temperatures and the minimum motor temperatures. Then we'll move on to applications of brushless motors with respect to temperature. So let's start off with our maximum temperature. Now, if you watched any of my previous videos, you will see that I love to throw this number around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. This is what I see as a very reliable and conservative temperature that does apply to all of your electrical components within your power system. And specifically, we're talking about motors today. This would, of course, apply to our brushless motor. 140 Fahrenheit is going to give you a very reliable power system and brushless motor. That is what I personally aim to always hit. No more than 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there are a lot of motor manufacturers out there that are suggesting a maximum motor temperature of about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. You may also find motor manufacturers that are exceeding this as well. Whatever the motor manufacturer is recommending, this is the number that you do not want to exceed. As long as you stick to this number and only fall below it in terms of your temperature when you're going and measuring them, you will have a reliable system. Now when we talk about minimum motor temperatures, there's not really a minimum motor temperature per se. You really want your motor to operate at the lowest temperature possible. Now that doesn't mean, you know, put it in a freezer box and hope, you know, at negative 8,000 degrees and hope that it's going to be okay. That's not totally true. We want to be operating in a temperature where we feel comfortable. And if we feel comfortable, the motor also will feel comfortable. When you talk about low temperatures, the motor windings are not affected by motor temperatures. The lower, the better. What is going to be affected is the bearings themselves. The bearings in colder temperatures will be a little more sluggish, a little bit more slow. This is the only thing that's really affected by the temperatures in terms of minimums. Now let's jump into the applications of brushless motors. So when we talk about brushless motor applications with respect to temperatures, we're really breaking it into two different categories. The first category is going to be the one who has or wants a very competitive setup and they are either racing or they're just being competitive with their setup in general. Uh, this may also mean that there are limitations to maybe the physical size of the motor in terms of length and diameter and there may also be limitations relative to the weight of the brushless motor. The second category is the one who is bashing or just running their RC vehicle for fun. So these are the two categories. Let's start off with the person who is running their radio control vehicle for fun. So what is the temperature that you should be aiming at in this application, this exact application? Well, the temperature that you should be aiming for is the absolute lowest possible temperature that you can achieve. And the way that you can accomplish this is by looking at the motor that you are expecting to run in the radio controlled vehicle and if you have more room let's say in terms of length if you can get a longer motor can by a few millimeters or maybe up to a maximum of 10 millimeters going to a longer length motor will further reduce your op your operating temperature now the other application is where we're racing so this is a more of a unique challenge in itself when we're talking about motor temperatures we do like to see lower motor temperatures. However, with the guy who's racing, they want a very competitive setup. And to get a competitive setup, having a larger motor means you're gonna have more physical size being consumed within this RC vehicle, and you're also gonna be having more weight. More weight does not necessarily give you a competitive advantage. So having a sm smaller motor is going to help out in this area. Now, a smaller motor is going to get hotter. So what this ultimately means for us is that the smaller motor getting up to temperature is actually not a bad thing because we have to get this in order to get the performance out of the RC vehicle. As long as we're not exceeding our maximum motor temperatures, the, the setup is still going to be reliable. 
Now, one thing that is also to be noted is that a small motor producing a specific wattage, let's say if we have a very small motor trying to produce 100 watts, it will be able to deliver 100 watts more efficiently than a very large motor trying to deliver that same power level. So that is going to be a competitive advantage. Yes, that small motor will operate at a hotter temperature, but it is also going to do it more efficiently than a large motor. The way that I'm able to look at this and kind of explain it a little bit better is imagine this same situation to the furthest extremes. If you have this tiny little motor delivering a very small amount of power, it can do it very efficiently. Now imagine a motor that's huge, you know, in physical size, trying to deliver a very small amount of power. Just to get this massive motor moving is going to be consuming a lot of energy and especially all the resistance and these massive bearings. So you get a whole bunch of wasted energy just to keep this large motor operating at a very small power level. So you can imagine that the small motor, even though it's getting hot or hotter it than the larger motor, it can still operate much more efficiently. So that is where you are able to see a competitive advantage. Being able to maintain high efficiencies allows you to squeeze out an extra watt. If you imagine 91% efficiency versus an 86% efficiency, that's going to be, you know, 5% gained. That could also mean an extra 5 watts of heat that you're able to produce or not produce. And 5 watts of heat, you know, is quite a bit, especially if you're producing over a thousand watts because that that difference is going to be multiplied by 10. So that now becomes 50 watts of extra heat just because of the efficiency. So ultimately the conclusion to what I'm saying here is that if you have a competitive setup and you want something that is like the best of the best out there for what it is, you want to select a motor that is as big as what you need only. You don't want to oversize it. You want to pick something that physically fits and it reduces at a reduced weight, reduced size. This way you have all the advantages that come with that. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're not exceeding your maximum temperature. This does mean that your motor is going to get up to a an operating temperature and that is okay if you're trying to achieve the best performance for a given setup. Now I don't want you to go ahead and think that a motor operating at a temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit is going to be less efficient or produce less power than the motor operating at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. If I were to keep that motor insulated so that it ended up operating 150 Fahrenheit and then I use that exact same motor but to put it into a different application where it sees the same power level but I apply a lot more cooling to it to maintain 100 Fahrenheit, I'm actually going to be able to consume a lot more power out of that motor with the better cooling. So definitely lower temperatures is always going to give you better results. The difference when it comes to this specific application where you're trying to be very competitive, it's due to the limitations that you have within your setup that you should expect to build a little bit of heat within that motor. You don't want to go and oversize everything. So there you have it. That is you know, motor temperatures with respect to applications, maximums and minimums. Now, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.